Well, friends, I don't know why she wouldn't run. It's a mystery to me. Holy Halliburton. Oh, good gravy, that is terrifying. Oh, sorry, did I get you there? Didn't mean to. What's up, friends? You're watching Doug the Carburetor. I am Doug. And I'm willing to bet somewhere in there is a carburetor for us to work on. This is my Dirty Bird Ferd trailer that Eric dropped back off to me with a whole pile of rusty, crusty, dusty, non-running equipment. And he said, hey bud, that snapper in there? I think that thing's gonna be 10 out of 10. You may wanna look at that one first. So we pick up these piles of non-running equipment. Uh, some of them are for parts, whatever else. But we're always on the lookout. This was Eric's haul the other day. We've got two small snow throwers. This looks like a Jacobson and a snapper couple lawnmowers we'll deal with them in the spring but Eric said he wants this snapper for himself it's been a while since I did anything nice for Eric oh, oh let's get this guy up to let's get this guy chooching for him what do you say so this lawnmower is not going to try to sneak up on me go go away come on there we go all right, friends, we'll do the quick walk around, then we'll dig in. I know nothing about this machine other than Eric said it's a snapper. I'm guessing from the size and shape and the way it is that we're dealing with a two-stroke unit here. Spark plug access hole. Let's see if she seized. Not seized. feel like it has a little bit of compression. Primer still seems to be a primer. Snapper! There she is. We'll dig into the underneathy bits some more later, but so far so good. I don't see anything suggesting that she's totally hooped. Okay. This uh, chute is all good. It's an interesting chute setup. I guess you're supposed to turn it like that or... I don't know. We'll have to figure that out as we go. Let's get her up on the bench there. Oh, we got a sticker. Ford's Lawnmower, Toro Snapper Skag X Mark, George Road, Ford's, New Jersey. I've lived in Jersey for 33 years and I have no idea where Ford's is. Ford's, New Jersey? I think y'all made that up. That sticker do look nice. This unit was kept in a garage, in a shed. Certainly not by a monkey with a toolbox like me. While I have your attention, let me give y'all real quick this sweatshirt. A lot of y'all have commented on, this is a sweatshirt I make. Haven't started selling it yet, but I will. Uh, it's a Jeep sweatshirt. A lot of you know me from my other channel. It's a Jeep channel. Um, but before any of you yell at me, this was the prototype that I made, and it's wrong. The firing order on the 4 liter is supposed to be 2-4, not 4-2 at the end. So uh, when the real ones come out, but you leave me a comment down in the squawk box. This, a couple of you were like, hey, I need a link to that sweatshirt. So I will put it up on Etsy if y'all want. I don't know. Let me know. Let's get into this snapper. I don't yet know what year this thing is. I'm guessing she's a little old, but I am blown away with how light and compact it is. If this thing actually moves any amount of snow, I'm going to absolutely call this one of my favorite new designs for a tiny one. Now, got the serial number here. I don't know why y'all can see it because it's very reflective, but the first two digits are 6-4. I thought on, on Snapper serial numbers, the first two digits were the, um, the year, so that would make this a 1964, but I'm not sure. There's also a 9 and a 3 in there, but I don't think this is a 93. Could it be a 64? Y'all let me know what you think. It's rare that I come up on a snowblower I have no experience with, but this is one of them. It's a very interesting choke setup, right? It's this little wire thing. Let's start getting in there and see what we can see. Oh, yeah, that's probably better. Not tea bag in there so far. Let's see what's the fuel situation look like. Ooh, that smells ripe. Smells ripe. You can already see there's water in there. <laughs> so let's see, is there a little belly pan we can get off to try to get to that tank? Because if this is a two-stroke, that's going to be the key. Get that out of there. Make sure there's no poop in the carburetor and you're good to go. Let's see. Looks like the tank may actually be screwed. Oh, here we go. Got some, uh... oh, beautiful. I love seeing this. So confirmation of a two-stroke there. Warning, 32 to 1. Mix two-cycle oil with unleaded 
regular grade gasoline. I think the fact that they're calling for unleaded rules out 1964, because didn't we de-lead gas in the late 60s? I don't know, someone will let me know. But you can tell it's old because 32 to one, oil used to be such crap. Uh, I've got an outboard. Well, I talk about that in every damn video. I'm not gonna say it again. Tecumseh products. So it has a Tecumseh, probably a five horsepower. I know this motor. I've worked on this motor before. I've just never worked on one of these in a snapper. All right, it's gonna be a Tecumseh five horsepower two stroke. They're some of the most loyal little motors you can have. They don't require adjustment. Just get the poop out of the carburetor and it will run. Ooh, fuel mixing chart, what's this? Oh, that's kind of interesting. So they let you know if you're putting in one gallon of gas, you need four ounces of fuel, of oil, imperial, whatever meters is, 1.25, just seems difficult. All right, friends, I was bumming around the Lowe's the other day and I saw this on a clearance rack. Metabo was selling these quarter inch impact sockets, uh, standard quarter inch up to one half. They uh, plop right in your quarter inch unit here though. I've been loving them to death because those are all the sizes you use on snow blowers, lawn mowers, you know, little power equipment. Uh, so it's been real nice having all those right there on one little clip, Metabo, good name. Go check them out. Found them at Lowe's for about 10 bucks. Would recommend, that's not what you guys are here to see. Let's get you turned around and start talking about this snar blower. We loosened up this black cover here, let all the um, pine needles out. But we are faced with a familiar sight. We did one of these last year. Um, this is a very common motor, not as common as the flathead four strokes, but if you have a two stroke snowblower, this is probably the motor you have. This is gonna look familiar to everybody. It's that Tecumseh bowl that's on all of them. It's on the same one as on the flatheads. Very similar carburetors on here, just smaller. Here's our tank that we need to drain. I'm confident, I don't know, let's see. Can we just drain her and then uh, go right from there? That sure would be awesome, wouldn't it? We'll drain it here on the carburetor. Oops. Rut roll, Raggy move y'all back a minute. Okay, now what happens a lot of times, this is one drop of fuel that came out of that fuel tank. What happens on these two strokes uh, is the oil kind of turns to tar when they sit and it just gums everything up like you could not believe. I think that's what we're about to come in contact with here. Uh, so far, just about every two stroke I've done has that problem. And you can see, I mean, that is nasty. That came right out of the tip. That's probably what's in our carburetor. Let's tip this back here. Oh man, is that nasty. I really hope y'all can see that. That is next level. That's coming right out of the fuel tank. My goodness. This thing may be from 64. This gasoline may be from 64. Good gravy. Oh, please don't fall on my head snapper. Well, friends, I don't know why she wouldn't run. It's a mystery to me. Eric's gonna get a laugh out of that. It's still kind of, ugh, ugh. Nope, ugh. <coughs> I should not have done that. That was the gnarliest smelling fuel I've, I've had in a while. We're not gonna mess around with this old fuel line here. Let me bring y'all back in. The fuel that comes out of your tank looks like that. Just replace the fuel line. It's worth 37 cents. Because it's probably all tarry in there. I don't know, we'll take a look at it. Let's put it over by the bench. I don't usually take the carbs apart on the machine, but I kind of want to see what this monster looks like, so. There it is. Oh yeah. Whoops, go figure. Main jet don't look that bad, but we all know what we're about to encounter in there. Yeah, 
same gnarly stuff. Oh God, that's gross. It's one even part fuel, one even part tar, and one even part water at this point. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. I guess I'll go ahead and take this out now. Thankfully, most of the parts on here are the same. They use the same seat, same needle, same bowl, float, all that crap. Different jets, obviously. Let me get this carburetor off. How about we don't waste no time? You've seen me do this a million times. I'm gonna argue with this carburetor. I'll meet y'all over at the bench. Alrighty, friends, the carburetor's off, and as you can hear, the Angry Hornet machine is warming up in the background, the ultrasonic cleaner. Please excuse the noise. What I wanna do now is confirm a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna concern, confirm that the electrical start works. We're gonna confirm that it has compression. We're gonna confirm that it has spark by just putting some two-stroke fluid down the uh, old throat hole here and just see if she wants to bark. Uh, the key's in the run position. And as far as I can tell, there aren't a ton other safeties on this thing. Well, good golly, Miss Molly, I'll tell you what, that was impressive. Didn't even hesitate. We've got a runner. I don't have to mess with spark. I don't have to mess with compression. This electric start works, which is going to just tickle Eric. My goodness, let's clean that carb, get some fresh fuel in her, see if she don't want to chuck some snow. This is actually a pretty interesting carburetor. This is how it tensions the throttle plate. It's got this sort of complex little piece of metal over here that the uh, mounting bolt or stud goes through, and that's how it tensions up the throttle plate. Kind of interesting. I think this might be a 1964 unit. I mean, that's what the serial number is definitely telling us. I'm gonna strip this down a little bit further. You guys have seen me do this a hundred times. Interestingly, this is a non-adjustable car, but then is that supposed to be wide open or is it missing something? Oh, you know what, the two strokes, maybe they weren't, they weren't adjustable. Maybe the two strokes weren't adjustable. I don't remember, but it doesn't have an adjustable main jet. And I don't really see anything over there. So anyway, I'm gonna throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll come get you guys when it is done. You've seen me do that about a hundred times. In fact, I'll even link a video somewhere where I gave some tips on ultrasonic cleaning carburetors. Alrighty friends, soup is done. Let's see how she looks. Now the interesting thing about these two strokes is that you don't get a lot of the same varnish that you do with uh, just a regular four stroke. So they're actually kind of easy to clean uh, once you get the, uh, I don't even know what to call that. It looks like, what's green like that? Is that silver polish? Does silver polish look like that? Is that what I'm thinking of? I don't know, something I remember from as a kid. Wakes his carbonator is still pretty dirty. I think we're gonna have to blow some ur through her. Did you hear it? The uh, the seat. Sometimes when you put it in there, the seat <whistles> fires out like a rocket. Yeah, we got her. No worries. I got more seats. this jet <clears throat> that's really about it that's all there is to it we can slam this thing back together move on to the next thing yeah she got nice and clean I'm pretty comfortable with that 
I don't, I don't think we're gonna have any issues. So I'll uh, throw this thing back together. Since this video is kind of shaping up to be a more concise one, I'm not gonna bring y'all with me. Y'all have seen me put a carb together. I'll leave a link to a video where I do an in-depth uh, rebuild if you really wanna see one. Friends, I finally did it. Bought myself the Tecumseh carburetor tool. It's got a number of features, but the main thing I'm gonna use it for is uh, this guy right here. You got your seat and you put it right on there and now you have the perfect mechanism for jimmy jamming her down in there. Like a glove. Oh man, was that easy. You don't have to mess around trying to find the right size drill bit. Yeah, there we go. All there is to it. Friends, I have the weirdest tip for you. Tecumseh, bowl gaskets, Briggs and Stratton, and a couple others use similar. Uh, a lot of times you go to reuse them and they leak, but the bummer is, you know, if everything else in the carb is fine, you don't really want to reuse it anyway. I have my entire life been trying to find a good way to recondition these. I know there's no reason this should work. I started doing it this year on a whim out of frustration. Fluid film. I don't know why I have not had the problem this year with leaking rebuilt carbs that I have most years. And all I can think of, the only thing I've changed, I started putting a little fluid film on the, uh, on the bowl gasket there. It's, it, I'm certain that this is a, a red herring and I'm reading into something that ain't really there, but I'm just telling you, you don't got to leave a whole lot on there. You can rubber on down. I, I don't know if it brings the rubber around or it just helps, you know, I mean, it makes kind of sense. You know, it's like a, um, your oil filter there, right? Got to get her, got to get her wet. So for all we know, that gasket's from 1964, but it's got no cracks in it and it's got plenty of give. So... Yeah, there she goes. We're going to try to reuse her. I do have extras, but uh, if you can reuse that one, why not, right? We forget anything? Float looks like it's nice and level. Beautiful. This thing is going to be a hell of a runner. No dump on the carb. Kind of a bummer. Oh, yeah. And a great way to test those bowl gaskets once you put it on, just try to lightly turn the bowl. If there's resistance, that means it's sealing. If it slides on it, that means, you know, the rubber's compacted and it's just not going to work. We've got a new fiber gasket here. It's my last one, actually. I need to order more from the communists. Uh-oh. Well, there's a problem. These fiber gaskets are for the... The other, um, you know, these style. The four-stroke ones, which are... Considerably smaller. This is a four-stroke one. Old fiber gaskets right there. And that's uh, that's the two-stroke one. So quite a big difference in size. And the only fiber gaskets I have are for that. So let's see, where's the one that came on this thing? Did I already throw that out? Oh, life is hard and harder if you're stupid. You just you make more issues for yourself. Is there any way I can thread this on there? No, it's significantly uh, the wrong size. Cool. All right, friends. Well, that was the dumbest idea I've had in a while, but I do think it uh, kind of worked. Well, we ripped the fiber gasket. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm making hash out of this. We're going to try it like that, and I desperately hope it doesn't leak. I hate when snowblowers leak. This one's going to Eric, too. So if it's leaking all over his darn garage and his truck and everything, I'm going to hear about it. So... All right, friends, I do not mind telling you that the way they put this thing together, they did not want this carburetor coming off. I mean, it's just, it's tight is what it is. But uh, well, while we're here, let's test our uh, primer bulb. You want to push the button up here. And then when you put your finger over, it shouldn't really be able to push anymore. If you can still hear air moving, no idea if you all can hear that. Uh, as you know, without a, a pitch change, when you put your finger over it, Either your line is clogged or more likely it's cracked. Your primer, primer bulb is screwed. Um, on these old two strokes when they've got that, uh, you know, that, uh, I can't remember that, that forest green liquid reminds me of something. I can't, it's something, I remember being under the sink at my grandmother's house. I think it was silver polish or lamp oil. Maybe it was lamp oil. I don't know. When y'all, if, if, if that, Spun y'all back and, and gave you a memory. Somebody remind me what I'm thinking of. It's going to take me an hour to get this carburetor on. So I'll bring you guys back in. Alrighty, friends. Looks like the tank will pop right out with these four three eights. So let's do that. Nice and easy. 
to clean. Probably have to remove the top. There we go. Boy, that's a small fuel tank. All right, friends. Oh yeah, just the best of the best. That good milky sauce. My God, that is gross. Of course, it's all gone now that I want to do something with it. Think that stuff's even flammable anymore? Granted, that's out of the bottom of the tank, so it's probably mostly water. Oh yeah. She should have run, right? It's actually quite flammable. But you can see, you see all the water beading up on there? So it was mixed in with water. Obviously oil, because it's two strokes. Just a mess. Just a mess is what it is. So what we're gonna do, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take my fancy dancy, fancy pantsy uh, tank stopperizer. Put that on there. Doesn't matter. Let's take a little splash. All I have is two stroke gas, but that's okay because this is a two stroke. Let's see, I'd like for y'all to be able to see what it's like in there because it's just slimy and. Oh, my light here. Can y'all see? Can you see how slimy and just gross it looks? So I'm really hoping that a little bit of gasoline will break that up. I might have to spray some brake clean in there to clean it up, but let's try this first. Just a bit. I'll put the top on. And, whoops, get over here and get to shaking. Hey, eh? ow! Let's uh, put our lamp oil back in there. Oh, that is just choice. Naughty bag, right? That's what it should have looked like. Shoot, I'm tempted to try to burn that. Uh, no, there's all, I know y'all can't see, but there are all kinds of particles in there. Let's see, does that do anything? I have no idea what you can and cannot see. There, that's probably a pretty good view. All types of particles. I'll bet if I let it sit, it's a good amount of water in the bottom, so let's uh, clean up the outside of the tank a little bit. Just cause, since it's literally sticky from years of, I don't know, I guess maybe it's, uh, maybe it's old oil or God knows what. How clean is the insidey bit? Eh, came out clean enough. Let's see. Now when you're cleaning one of these tanks out, the last thing you should do, and I don't mean something you don't want to do, I mean the physical last step, take a little bit of compressed air and just blow it around in there. And the, the goal there is any last little bits of particulates or water, hopefully we're gonna blast them out. Over 
My uh, hose is getting squirmy on me. What are you doing? There we go. All right. All right, good enough for government work. Let's get this back on the machine. bag we should definitely replace the fuel line we don't need a lot right just about well, give or take that much this is something i started doing this year i started replacing the fuel lines on more of these it's a little thing i got an entire roll that's going to last me probably most of my life uh snowblowers wise anyway it was like uh what do i get 20 feet of that crap so maybe I do the, what does that get me, 20, 15, 20 snar blowers, but uh, at least you can rule out an obstruction, old stuff in there. It's, it's really been kind of nice not having to worry, like, is the fuel line part of my issue? So of course we'll switch over these little pressure clips. Will that slide like that or do I have to move it? Yeah, I'll have to move this, that's no problem. Can't wait to see how this thing eats the snow. I'll bet you this thing's an animal. Eric and I have had these two strokes before and they're usually pretty gnarly. So this was the old hose fuel line. Conceivably nothing wrong with it, but um, might as well, you know, really give ourselves the best opportunity here. Back up. Oh, would you look at that? It's a beautiful thing, isn't that? Isn't that? This could go up some more, but it's good enough for government work. Good enough for government work. I tell you what, friends, I'm gonna slam this uh, back, this belly pan back on because these things are. Yeah, I'll slam that on and then we'll take a quick look at the chain drive. Alrighty, friends, we have popped the side off here. This is where I thought it was gonna be a chain drive. It's not. It is a um, traditional belt setup with a tensioner pulley here. This pulley, when you pull the lever, which I'm doing up on top of the handlebars, brings that down. Very traditional um, snar blower setup. The belt could use a little help. I think that's probably not long for this world. This pulley, I'd love to get off and clean the corrosion out in general. It's dusty, crusty. Uh, and rusty in here. So let's get this thing running. Just see if she chooches. Uh, this is gonna be a unit Eric and I hold on to. So we will do another video on cleaning all this up, maybe putting a new belt on it. But for right now, let's just see what she's made of. I wanna hear this thing growl. Oh, friends, I couldn't do it. We can't just roll this thing outside without checking on the, uh, the old spork plug there. That just, it's just not right. Oh, it's got a weird size plug. Of course it does. Good gravy. Five eighths done is two three quarters too big, but eleven steeds is too small. I wonder if this is an eighteen mil plug, like on a friggin' uh, quad. What do you think? That'd be kind of weird, right? No, it ain't eighteen mil. Thirteen, sixteen, it's too big. Oh, but we're gonna make it work, cause I feel like dickering all day. Oh, I lost her. Yeah, I'm glad we checked this. Um, actually, looks like about a newer plug. Just, just a little dirty there. So uh, I'm gonna give her the brake clean and burnsomatic treatment, and we'll slam her back in her. Oh yeah, look, you can see the. Still got some nice uh, edges on the electrode there. Let's gap her. I bet you she's sitting right at 30. Somebody put this new plug in and then uh, sent her on down the line. It's right, it's not even at 30. It's at 29 and a half. <laughs> Would you look at that? All right. All right, friends, I found a lag bolt that's too big and a nut that only kind of fits, but uh, yeah, it's good enough for government work, isn't it? I really just want to get this thing outside and see if she barks to life. Pretty confident after the way it started on that uh, two-stroke gas right down the throat hole before. There 
There we go, friends. Good as new. Let's get this thing outside. Oh. Good-ish as new. I love that. Whatever. I will need to remember that this is not a large tank. For once, hopefully I won't overfill it. Don't need to put a lot in either, because I don't know if it leaks yet. It's probably good enough for gum at work. This is 50 to 1. Um, I am betting strongly that 30 to 1 is from the crappy oil they had in the 70s and 60s. I guess this is a 64. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. We did the spark plug. It's hooked back up. I'm going to leave this off while we go outside in case I need to fiddle with anything. Though there's not a lot to fiddle with, so better hope. All right, let's go. Prime it again. Pull our choke out. We're in the run position. Did I get you there? Didn't mean to. <laughs> and this thing's cool as hell. Let's go inside again and talk about it. All right, friends, let's close this one here. Mission accomplished. We had a DOA snar blower. I mean, I know we didn't try to start it on that emerald green mystery juice, but uh, I'm relatively confident it wasn't gonna work anyway. Now she's running. If anybody knows anything about this machine, I love old snapper snow blowers. I've never had one like this before. I've had similar units, but never a snapper one. So let me know, does snapper make this? I'll have to do some research. I, you can tell it's old because they don't put this kind of two cycle mix chart and all that. They don't put that on machines anymore. So very well could be a 64. That's what the serial number is telling me. I'm gonna have to look into it, but either way, no matter what year it is, no matter who made it, she's a runner. Now, obviously this doesn't have the same teeth that a big, 824 Toro or something is gonna have. This is what I mean when I say they're a snow thrower. It's good for a walkway, maybe a deck. I'll tell you where I'd like to use this. I got a wooden deck. I can't obviously take a metal auger snow blower on. This might be good for that. Um, Cause the auger is metal, but then it's uh, rubberized. I'll tell you, it's horrifying. I don't know if you saw at the end, it doesn't slow down, it just freewheels. Ooh, buddy, I mean, you could, you could delete some digits with this bad boy. So I'm gonna get her cleaned off a little more and then send her on up the road to Eric's. If you guys have any questions, by all means, let me comment down in the squad box. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And again, if there are any Jeepers out there, anybody who knows me from my other channel, Dini in the Garage, uh, and you're interested in the four liter uh, firing order sweatshirt, I'm gonna A, fix the wrong firing order and then uh, I'll throw up on Etsy. Y'all let me know down in the squad box. All right, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the next snar blower in that thing. So let me know. There was a Jacobson. It was like this, but wider. Y'all want to see that? Or have you had enough of the two-stroke snar blowers? You let me know. I'll catch y'all in the next.